code question is called longest consecutive sequence. It says given an unsorted array of integers, find the length of the longest consecutive element sequence. So for this question, a sequence could be something like 0, 1, 2, or 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, things like that. Then it says your algorithm should run an O of n complexity. So for the example they give us, there's the array 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, and 2. And in that array is the sequence 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how many numbers are in the sequence 1, 2, 3, and 4? That would be four numbers, so the length is four. And as a side note, a sequence is also considered a streak, so I'll be going back and forth between sequence and streak during my explanation. All right, I've purposely slightly modified the example in the question so we can see how to deal with duplicates. Let's think about what our end goal is. At the end of this, we have to determine what the longest streak is. So we're going to look at each number and determine the length of the streak that it's involved in. So a length from one to n. So in the first case, let's say the first number is 100. We're gonna somehow determine how long the streak it's included in is. But let's say then we go to the next number. The next number is also 100, but we've already determined the streak that the number 100 was involved in because we've seen it before. Now let's think about by the time we get to this over here, that's also the number 100. If we kept the duplicates in, we will have checked three times the length of the streak that the number 100 is in. Do we really need to do this multiple times? No, we really only need to check it once. So really the first thing we should do is remove any duplicates and we'll do that using a set. And that's because a set by definition doesn't contain any duplicates. So we'll add everything to a set and then we'll loop over only the numbers in the set because we know at that point that every number in the set is unique. So after we add it to the set, our data set would look more like this. Okay, so now that every number in our data set is unique, what happens now? Let's start again with the number 100. To increase the streak, we need to look at whether the number 101 is in the set. Is it? No, it's not. So the current streak for the number 100 is one. And since we can't extend that streak, we can also say at this point that the global streak is also one because we've only looked at one number so far and it has a streak of one. Let's move on to the next number. We need to reset the current streak to one, but it's already one, so you can't really tell in this case. Can we extend the streak for the number four? Well, we do know because of the example provided in the question that the number four is involved in a streak. It's involved in the streak one, two, three, four. So we shouldn't just consider the number that's one more than the number we're on. We also have to consider the number that's one less than it. But how do we actually go about doing that? Do we do something like we arrive at the number and we check if the number that's one number below it is in the set? And if it is, then we try to continue that streak. And then also see if the number that's one number above that number is in the set and try to continue that streak? That would be unnecessarily complicated. Ideally, we would find the lowest number in a streak, let's say one, and then only start counting the numbers in the streak from there. So to do something like that, we really do only have to consider if the number that's one greater than the number we're on is in the set. But checking if the number that's one less than the number we're on does actually play a really important role. Let's consider the number we're on, which is the number four. We get to the number four, and we check to see if the number that's one greater than it is in the set. It's not. Now let's skip ahead a couple steps. So let's say we're at the number one. 
at the number one, we check to see if the number that's one greater than it is in the set, and we try to create a streak that way. So is the number that's one greater than one in the set, which is the number two? Yes, it is. So we would have the number two. Can we keep that streak alive? Is the number that's one greater than the number two in the set, which is the number three? Yes, it is. Is the number that's one greater than the number three in the set, which is the number four? Yes, it is. Now is the number that's one greater than the number four, which is the number five? Is that in the set? No, it's not. So that streak is done. But we know that eventually we'll get to the number three. Using the number three, that streak we know will be three and four. And then we'd get to the number two, and we know that streak would be two, three, four. Notice how much duplication there is. We've checked the number four, one, two, three, four times. We've checked the number three, three times. And we've checked the number two twice. This is not very efficient. So what we can do instead is anytime we arrive at a number, we can check whether the number that's one less than it is in the set. If it is, we know that the number we're on will already naturally be included in another streak. And since it will be captured in another streak, we can skip over it now and let the other streak count it. So with that rule in mind, we're going to move on to the next number. At this point, the global streak is still 1, and the current streak is still 1. So let's move over to the number 200. First, we check to see if the number that's 1 less than 200 is in the set. Because if it is, we know that it will already be captured in a different streak, so we don't have to worry about it now. Is 199 in the set? No. So now we can consider if the number 200 starts a new streak. So is the number 201 in the set? No, it's not. So the current streak is still 1, and the global streak is also still 1. Now we move on to the number 1. Is the number that's 1 less than 1, meaning the number 0 in the data set? No, it's not. So now we can check to see whether the number one starts a streak. So is the number that's one greater than one in the set? Well, yes, it is. It's the number two. So we know that this streak is at least two. Is the number that's one greater than two in the set? Yes, it is. So we add one to the current streak. Is the number that's one greater than three in the set? Yes, it is. The number 4 is in the set, so we add another one to the streak. And is the number that's 1 greater than 4 in the set? No, the number 5 is not in the set, so our current streak ends at 4. So now that the current streak is done, we can check. Is the current streak greater than the global streak? Well, yes, it is. So now the global streak has to get updated to match the current streak. All right, so we're moving on to the next number, which means we have to reset the current streak back to one, because now we're gonna be at the number three. So, is the number that's one less than the number three in the set? Yes, it is, the number two is in the set. So we can ignore the number three, because we know that the number three is already going to be captured, or has already been captured, in a different streak. So the global streak remains at 4, and the current streak remains at 1. All right, so finally, we're at the number 2. Is the number that's 1 less than the number 2 in the set? Yes, it is. So we know that the number 2 is already going to be captured, or has already been captured, in another streak. So we can skip over the number 2. And now, we're at the end of the set. So we know that the final answer is that the longest streak is four. All right, let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function called longest consecutive, which accepts an argument named nums 
and nums is just an array of integers. So remember the first thing we have to do is create a new set. So we'll say let set equal a new set. So now we add every number to the set. So for let num of nums set dot add num. So every number is added to the set. At this point, that would look like this. This original data set will become this. So it'll only have unique values. All right, so then we need to also keep track of the longest streak. So we'll say let longest streak equal zero. You can say over here, longest equals zero. All right, so now we have to loop over every number in the set. So that's four, let num of set this point would be here at the number 100. So for every number we land on, we have to first check whether the number that's one less than it is in the set. Because if it is, we know that the number that we're on either has already been captured or will be captured in another streak. And in that case, we can just ignore it. So we'll say if the set doesn't have the number that's one less than we're on, then we can continue. All right, and the set does not have the number 99. So now we can create a temporary variable that says let current num equal the number we're on and let the current streak equal one. So that'll look like this. Current equals one. All right, so since the number that's one less than it is not in the set, we can check to see whether or not the number we're on starts a new streak. So we'll say while set has current num plus one. So we check to see if the number that's one greater than it is in the set, and if it is, then we'll just see how many times that happens. So we'll say current streak plus equals one and current num plus equals one. So increment the count of the streak and increment the number by one until we no longer have a streak going. All right, then after we do that, we just need to see which one is greater, the current streak or the global streak. So we'll say longest streak equals the maximum of either the longest streak or the current streak. All right, so now we go back to the diagram on the left. The number 101 does not exist in the set, so that streak is done. So now we update the longest streak to equal the current streak, because the longest streak so far only had the number 100 in it. All right, so now we move on to the next number, which is the number four. Is the number that's one less than the number four in the set? Yes, the number three is in the set, so we know that the number four is going to be captured or has already been captured in a different streak. So we can just move on to the next number. Is the number that's one less than the number 200 in the set? No, it's not, so we can check to see if the number 200 starts a new streak. Is the number 201 in the set? No, it's not, so we just move on to the next number. So remember that at this point, the current streak is still one and the longest streak is still one also. All right, so we're at the number one. Is the number that's one less than the number one in the set? No, it's not. So now we can see if the number one starts a new streak. Is the number that's one greater than one in the set? Yes, it is, that's the number two. So our current streak 
is going to be updated to 2. So now we see how long this streak goes on. Is the number 3 in the set? Yes, it is. Is the number 4 in the set? Yes, it is. Is the number 5 in the set? No, it's not. So our current streak ends at 4. So now that we're done with our current streak, the longest streak now has to be updated to match the current streak since the current streak is greater than it. So longest will be 4. We move on to the next number, which means we reset the current streak to 1. We check if the number that's 1 less than the number 3 is in the set. Yes, it is. So we move on because we know that 3 is being captured somewhere else. Finally, the number 2 is the number that's 1 less than it in the set. Yes, it is. So we move on. And now we're done. So now we know that the only thing left to do is to return the longest streak. All right, let's run the code, make sure it works. Yes, it does. Let's submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 98% of other JavaScript submissions, and it takes up less space than 100% of them. So as usual, you can find the code and written explanation down below. And also in the description are other algorithm resources similar to this. See you next time.